Eugene is a city that God loves. He created the people and the place, and he loves them both. In 1929, God began stirring the hearts of a few people to plant a Nazarene church in the heart of this city. It was to be a community of holy fire, a community where people could come and experience the hope, healing, and wholeness of Jesus Christ. For more than 90 years, our faith family has been entrusted with the task and the message of reconciling people back to God. And in those years, Jesus has been speaking through us this beautiful message. God unconditionally loves you, so come back to God. We believe this story is an important one to tell, not just for us, but for those who will come after us, for our children, for our children's children, that the Spirit of God would stir in their hearts a greater faith, a deeper love, that they too would allow Jesus to live and proclaim this redeeming message of God through them in this city and beyond. Here is our story. Nazarenes here may form church. Tentative plans for forming a Nazarene church in Eugene are being laid. The outcome of the revival will determine whether or not the group will organize permanently. Our mission is to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. We are a pray first kind of faith family. Among the people who came and prayed first were an unchurched farming couple that was inspired to become Christian after they hosted a young Nazarene minister who they overheard praying all night for them. Our first pastor was Reverend Ava Adams Bainter, who on faith moved from Seattle to lead a church that hadn't been formed yet. She was very unassuming and yet she was very strong from what we have, from what I know about her, and of course never having met her. Not overbearing at all, just a, a very lovely person. The original church was a butcher shop, and they had to take all of the insides out. And I think had it not been for her and her faith, that this church probably never would have been built. September 1931. Hall at 8th and Monroe burned with all contents. October 1931, pitch tent on 8th Avenue between Jefferson and Madison Streets. November 15th of 1931, Ava Adams resigned due to ill health. She says, My health broke after about a year and a half and I had to leave. But again and again the Lord whispered these words to me. The tears of the sower and the songs of the reaper shall mingle together in the sweet by and by. November 25th, 1931, a house rented to serve as our home for our church. We eventually got our own home through the radical generosity of our faith family. We broke ground on a new building. It was a little white church on the corner. And I January 12th, 1936, we moved into our new building we were so excited. We moved in, even though the insides weren't finished yet. A lot of work and material was donated to make this happen. April 26, 1949, planted Springfield Church of the Nazarene. November 2nd, 1952, new church building built. September 7th, 1958, planted Fairfield Church of the Nazarene. Well, we came back in 1958. Jerry Johnson was pastor. We were there. Our first Sunday was the Sunday that Fairfield Church was organized. I'm Regina Manley, and I've been a member of Eugene First Church, an active member since 1961. I remember people going forth and volunteering to be the people that would start the church. And so it was exciting to see that happen. I'm Eva Randall, and Adrian and I have been in this church 57 years. We came to this church in the January of 1964, and we got the notion that we wanted a drugstore of our own, so we drove around. When we come down for the weekend, we'd go to church, and people just welcomed us in. I feel like God led us here, because we found the store, it was a good store, and the church was wonderful. 
November 1966, Youth and Education Building Dedicated. Well, we needed quite a few more teachers then because we had more kids. We had quite a bus ministry then. We would bring about 200 kids in almost every Sunday. <laughs> One funny thing about me looking for teachers was I was going through the directory. Pearl Messman worked then, and she was a very good friend of mine. And her and Don Wellman would get to laugh, and you wouldn't believe it. I was calling 80-year-old women to <laughs> teach four- and five-year-olds. <laughs> Some of the women who didn't teach, they would come in and take the role and that, and uh, it was a good time. Exciting. <laughs> But we had some really good pastors through the year. Bill Birch was only there two or three years, but he was one of these guys that he only preached about 20 minutes, but you wanted to hear every bit of it because it was all good. When Reverend Birch was here, we started the program of Faith Promise, a program that caught on for the whole denomination. This one weekend each year emphasizes the missional work of the local congregation and the global church. They are challenged to give generously to share Christ's transformational love with the world. They made a check, a huge, big check that two people stood on each end and took a picture of it. So anyhow, that was a highlight to have, have Faith Promise start in this church. We had three secretaries at that time, Nancy Olson, Linda Schweda, and myself. Uh, my name is Linda Shweda Harwell, and I began working at the church office in April of 1974. Um, during the Kent Anderson years, we hosted district assembly in Eugene, um, somewhere between 1,100, 1,500 people, I don't remember, at the fairgrounds, and I coordinated that. That was a very exciting time. And Kent, I think, was here almost 10 years. He was, he was a good pastor, a very dynamic preacher. I left the church office as an employee in May of 1989. I think Daryl's heart was in the downtown ministry, so he was not so much in moving and developing a new property and church outside the city. I think his heart was in the downtown ministry. He was, he was a young man. I remember him coming and sitting in front of my desk in the office after we voted to have him be head pastor. And he sat down on the chair in front of my desk and said, now Lois, do you think I'm up for this job? And I said, well, pastor, you're young. You've got a lot of energy. You've got a lot of good ideas. And you know that the Lord can lead you and he will lead you. So yes, I think you are up for the job. And, and he was a good leader. He really was. Not showy, but, but very biblical in his preaching. People were more relaxed. But, you know, in the years past, we dressed up. I don't know if that was to pay respect to God, pay respect to our church, or what. But I think in the 90s, we kind of shifted. We all came to church, but it was more relaxed atmosphere. So I came here in 1987 after I graduated from Oregon State. Uh, what initially drew me to the Faith family was, of course, Valerie was, was coming and we were in the process of getting engaged and moving to marriage. It was just a warm, uh, friendly, uh, family, welcoming church. So Ken Reinhardt came before me as treasurer. Um, Ken's a pretty amazing guy. He's real soft-spoken, but when he speaks, he, he doesn't say frivolous things. When he speaks, they are important things to learn and, and to listen to and to hang on to. It was, it was Ken that taught me about church budgeting. Um, when we think of budgets, a lot of times we just think of the numbers, but behind every number there was a ministry purpose. And from year to year when the numbers changed, what was the ministry purpose behind that that changed? Ken was the treasurer for 40 years. And prior to that, his dad was treasurer. So they were the only two guys that have ever been treasurer for the 90 years of our, of our church, as far as I understand that to be true. Mi nombre es Elias Pérez. Yo soy, vengo de Perú. Llegué en el año 2003. Y estoy aquí en la iglesia de Nazareno de Eugene desde el 2003. 
desde el 2007 abriendo este ministerio uh, por ahora estamos ya por 14 años en este ministerio muchas veces nos hemos centrado en las actividades en los programas en muchas cosas pero de repente no hemos crecido espiritualmente y en estos tiempos tan difíciles necesitamos que la iglesia sea una iglesia que confíe en el Señor bueno este aprendí mucho del pastor Les Moore mm. Él fue para mí como un padre, siempre lo amé y pues aprendí mucho de él y otras personas, pero la familia Trujillo, Michael y Ruth, ellos son como mis padres, mis consejeros que siempre están detrás de mí y también la pastora Vicky, es una gran mujer, admiro mucho. En 2007-2008, Uh, when Pastor Les came as our pastor, and um, um, we just we just sensed uh, God calling us uh, to look at relocating at the time. Before my time at the church, back probably I think it was in the early '80s, the church had tried to relocate out in the, the Valley River area, and uh, for whatever reason that project didn't go very well. Um, so we were really cautious going forward. We wanted to make sure we had the people with us. We wanted to make sure we were prayed up. We wanted to make sure this was God's leading. And, um, and so here we are, you know, 12 years after that initial vision. Um, it's expanded now. Um, we're, we're going multi-site. With decision with the church that it was going to maintain two properties, I said to Don, my current husband, I can't imagine how the church is going to be able to afford to build anything on the new property and keep 8th and Madison going at the same time. And then now look what's happened. What a miracle. It's nothing short of a God thing. One reason that we need to stay here at our location in downtown, I feel like, is because of the mission and the recovery program and what we can do to help them with that, help people get their lives back on track. Um, which I think was God's uh, purpose from the beginning uh, it took us a little bit of time to figure that out and see it but you know what god doesn't always reveal what's down the road he gives us enough for today and hopefully we're content with enough for today and not worried about the tomorrow pastor ryan and pastor julie asked us to come in the office and i think it was was it separate no it was, was it together it was yeah together They just think, wanted to know what we were about. They just wanted to talk to us, and it was like, why, you know? I'm Ryan Matson, and I've been part of the church for about a year and a half. And my name's Krista Matson, and I've also been a part of the church for a year and a half. We had talked about how we wanted to do things with homeless, and but could never get the opportunity, and like we had this vision of like helping addicts like us get where God wants them. And so it was like a conversation about that. COVID happened and Kimber like has this passion of what she wanted to do. And we were, we were help, I was helping her drive the van first. So, and they gave me the keys to the van. And we're like, here, go pick up people from Willamette Family Treatment Center. And I'm like, God can restore and heal anything. And people do love you and do trust you. I was doing a, a Celebrate Recovery meeting down at Sponsors. And so I had bought a laptop and a little projector and Kimber was like hey don't you have that projector I'll go buy a backboard and a barbecuer and we can just project uh, the service down under the bridge for a few weeks okay well let's do it I happen to have a generator too so uh, so that's all we had to do is buy a barbecuer and now all of a sudden you know we got this big stupid big generator and You know, everything that we need down here at the Bridge Church. And how long have we been doing that? Since COVID? Eight, nine months? Eight a months. long time. A lot of the people from Celebrate Recovery come and just do church with us. Like, that's really, it feels like it gives us an opportunity to serve. Because, you know, 12-step stuff is about service work. And so people showing up, um, bringing clothes, um, giving donations of money, whatever, right? Just bringing their time, like, 
And I think that's why we're called down there to that place is that there's um, shifting of the atmosphere that needs to happen in people's lives so that they can experience love because that's what God is, is he's love. Y creemos que Dios tiene cosas grandes para este ministerio y para la iglesia. Estoy muy contento, emocionado. Eh, de, creo que este se abren nuevas puertas en este tiempo. Y creemos que el Señor va a hacer cosas grandes en este año 2021. Until Jesus returns and makes all things new, we are giving ourselves to being completely dependent upon God. Because we want to see every person experience and live in the hope healing, and wholeness of Jesus Christ. You were created on purpose and for purpose. God has uniquely gifted you to make a difference in this world. As we think about our next 90 years as a faith family, would you prayerfully consider joining your story with the story that God is telling through our faith family, that together we could seek first the kingdom of God, and that together we could simply respond yes to Jesus. God bless you.